wrote a song about search engine optimization. Hear how it sounds. Hush, SEO guy, don't you cry. Everything's gonna be alright. Stephen, that upper lip up, it's not the end. I told you, Google's here to hold you through the night. OpenAI has been naughty, yeah, I know that too. It has created all this mess. Otherwise, a friend Google never would it turn a life into this number, I guess. Do you remember all those good old times when you cursed them in great update? Now more bird updates you'd rather see than as GE you completely feel betrayed And remember no matter how this story ends We've got each other as the old friends Penguin and Panda We survived it with each update We learn, adapt and create Hey, what's up everyone? Happy Friday! I just, um... Played a little clip from Loop. Is it Loopex? It was a pretty funny song. If you missed it, I'll probably play it again before we get started. But I uh, found that in the in this Slack group called Mostly Marketing. If you guys don't know about Mostly Marketing, check it out on LinkedIn, and you can find a subscription to the Slack group. All right, guys, happy Friday. Welcome to another episode of the SEO Video Show. Happy to be here. Today's special guest is Chris Palmer. Had a last minute cancellation and Chris was able to come in last minute. He hasn't been on for a while. It's been over 100 episodes since he was on. Let's get to catch up. On today's topic, we'll be we talking about using Web 2.0s for SEO domination. What is Web 2.0s? What is Parasite SEO? What is, or what are buffer sites? We'll talk all about that today with our very special guest today, Chris Palmer. Tuning in, be sure to say hi in the live chat and let me know where you're watching from. Lucy, happy Friday. Hello, everyone. Hello, well, at the music. <laughs> What's up, Emily? Tuning in, today's special guest is Chris Palmer. We'll be talking about how to use two Web 2.0s for SEO domination. We're just waiting for him to come on. Stefan, my man. Hi, everyone. Happy Friday. You guys enjoyed last week's episode. I was able to interview myself. G Man, what's up, Dre? <laughs> Maddox says, Awesome to see Chris back. Yes, sir. Thank you, Maddox, for coming back. <laughs> I gotta figure this out. <laughs> hey, Chris, I Chris. I see Chris. I see Chris's blue screen in the background. Chris is in the building. Uh, what do I need to do here? 
Uh oh. Wireless capture your iPhone or iMac. Mikhail says, Hi, Chris. Oh, man. Everyone's out. Oh, I see Chris. I see him. I see you, brother. I see you. Johnson says, Welcome back, Chris. Oh, yeah, guys. Kelly Bites says, What's up? Oh, yeah. If you're just tuning in, today's special guest is Chris Palmer. We're going to be talking about using Web 2.0s for SEO domination. We got about four and a half more minutes to go. Chris is just getting set up here. See him looking good. Oh yeah, if you're just tuning in, be sure to give, uh, give a shout out and let me know where you're watching from. Luther says, hi Chris and Dre. Hello Luther. Oh yeah, pitch black. I see it. <laughs> Clean. There you go. Hello. Perfect. Hello from Seattle, Washington, Carol Fry. Thank you for everyone for coming out so early. We got three more minutes to go. If you're just tuning in, today's topics we'll be talking about using Web 2.0s for SEO domination. This is also known as Parasite SEO, also known as Buffer Sites. Kobe says, yo, what's up, Dre and Chris? <laughs> we'll be sure to talk about all that good stuff and how you can get started with our very special guest today, Chris Palmer of Chris Palmer Marketing and SEOMastermind.org. comes uh, Casey Ni Neistat of SEO. Hello, Rob. <laughs> Be sure to get your okay. questions ready. Oh, yeah. You look good. Look good, brother. Okay. Everything's pitch black. I don't see any other background. <laughs> Love it. Love it. All right, guys, we got about two more minutes to go. We have Chris in the background looking good, sounding good. We'll be talking about using Web 2.0s for SEO domination. We'll be talking about all the great things he's been doing. It's over 100 episodes since he's been on. I believe he was like number 37 or so, but we are now at number 149. That was over two years ago. Rafael Velasco, what's up, Dre? Thank you, brother, again for coming back. Of course, my pleasure. It was so last minute. I was. It was crazy because I was like, you know, I usually play clips in the very beginning of the show, and yep. I, I found one of your clips. And I was like, and I got a cancellation uh, notice. I was like, oh, what the heck am I doing? I was like, hey, why play this clip? I'll just bring him on live and see this down. Yeah. <laughs> Let's have him talk about it in real life. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Suck at lighting, dude. That's no, like, your lighting look. I mean, what you yeah, need is like a. I, I never get the lighting right, man. It's so you need hard. a huge like umbrella. If you get like a huge umbrella with the, like a light shining into it, you'll get that nice soft lighting. Let's get a nice because ring lights tend to be too harsh. So yeah, if you get that nice big umbrella. Yeah, that's, that's what I need. All right, I need to think that. I got the rings. I got the squares. I bought all kinds of lights. <laughs> oh man. Uh, it's okay though. It looks okay. Not no, you look good, brother. You look good, brother. Rob says, I know it's the weekend is here when I see Dre. Yes, sir, Rob. <laughs> guys we got 30 seconds to go um chris i'm gonna put you on mute real quick and i'll introduce you in about maybe eight in about eight minutes 
And okay. so let me I go ahead and um, go ahead and do the beginning here. All right. So I'm going to put Chris on mute. Let me go ahead and get things ready here. Again, if you're just tuning in, today's topics will be using Web 2.0s for SEO domination with Chris Palmer. Get it started, no delay, let's work. Wanna see you be an SEO expert. Paul Andre Devera, steady dropping knowledge. Over 15 years in the game, so he knows all about it. Master the art of SEO, you will be amazed. Time to get your brand off page to on page. Dropping knowledge, legendary for sure. Whether you're just getting started, a self employed entrepreneur. Yeah, let's go. Subscribe to the SEO video show. Hey, hey, hey. Welcome to another episode of the SEO video show where SEO is alive and fun. My name is Paul Andre Devera. AKA Dre, and I curate SEO videos released in the past week into about one minute clips. My favorite part of the show is when I get introduced my guest. And my guest this week is the founder of SEOmastermind.org, Chris Palmer. Before we get started, let's say what's up to everyone in chat. I see Astrodan, Rob, Raphael, Ernesto, Kobe, Carol, Luther, Kelly Bites, G Man, Hobby, my man, Kumar, Emily, Stefan, Lucy. Oh my God, there's so much more. And thank you, thank you so much for coming by. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Support this channel. Now let's get on with the show. Hey Dre, why did the SEO cross the road? They wanted to get hit by traffic. Ah! Google had another Office Hours video release. Let's check out one question, one of the questions on how do you avoid Google selecting incorrect canonical URLs from another country domain. Let's check this one out. That's a really good question. Thanks, Louisa. Canonicalization and hreflang are intertwined but slightly different concepts. With hreflang, you basically told Google, these pages are the same but in different languages and or regions. Canonicalization then makes a decision on which one to be the main URL in our index. And if you create a group of pages with roughly the same content, but in different languages or for different regions, canonicalization will still pick a main URL, but other URLs can and will show up in the search results, depending on the user's language and region. In your specific example, users in Germany are likely to see the .de domain, even if the .at or .ch domain is selected as the canonical. What makes this a bit trickier is that Austrian and German pages probably are very, very similar in their content. So this might not always work 100%. So it is a good idea to let people choose which region they prefer to look at, should the selection be off. This is a common problem for all global SEOs out there. I mean, I can speak from experience. I mean, I could fix this by using um, as any possible country indicator, whether it was old metadata, stating the country and language, or even schema market. I even, I even went as far as setting up a Google business profile for each country. Okay, finding a domain to 301 redirect to boost your SEO with Matt Diggity. Let's check this one out. Now, step one in doing a 301 redirect correctly is finding the right domain to redirect to your site. I'd also say that this is the most important step as well. I mean, if you're importing a Miata engine into your Ferrari, it's obviously not gonna go well. What's the point of importing links to your site if those links aren't powerful or authoritative enough in the first place? In terms of authority, I'd shoot to look for domains with the domain rating of at least 40. That's a decent level of authority to be worth your time, but obviously more is better. You're also looking for rare links that are difficult to outreach or even pay for. Open up a referring domains report and filter by do follow links. Look at the best links the site has and ask yourself, are these hard to get? Would they make a big difference to my site if I had them? You also want to make sure the links are moderatively relevant to your niche. One way to do that is to look at the anchor text going to your redirect website. Are they on topic? Next, are the links clean? Does the domain have a bunch of spam or is the link profile relatively clean? Remember, you're inheriting all the links. You don't want to be inheriting a bunch of crap. After that, you want a minimal drop history. If a domain had been owned and sold and passed around like a joint at a Snoop Dogg concert, you probably want to skip it. I'll show you where to get completely non-drop domains soon. And here's a bonus criteria. If you're buying a site that is currently live and getting traffic on content that you want to have on your site as well, that's the creme de la creme. Of course, you can do redirects just to import some backlinks. But if you can get new content and traffic while you're at it, that's just the ultimate play here. 
Matt goes on to talk about making an acquisition announcement landing page to be transparent with visitors and Google. Techabyte shares how you can create link wheels without being penalized. Let's check this out. Uh, but at the time, I mentioned we had these 15 stores. And so they were all on different domains. So one of the things I wanted to do was to interlink them, which people were commonly referring to as a link wheel, which is fine. Uh -huh. But I noticed that all these other companies are doing effectively the same thing and they're not getting punished. Why is that? And uh, so I'd look at Viacom and CNN and The Gap and all, all these big brands that are just effectively link wheeling, but it's allowable. And the thing I noticed was that in all those cases, it was done in a way where it was uh, disclosure. Uh, you know, this company also owns and operates mm -hmm. you know, the hammock store, the car uh, supply depot, uh, aquariums are us. And, you know, so they list out all the properties they also own and operate. And so I did that too. This company also owns and operates and listed out all of the different things we own and operate. And that was fine. So cross-linking, even if the sites are different, as long as it's an accountability disclosure statement, appears to be the rule. This ties back to what Matt was saying about um, being transparent with your visitors and Google. So if you ever feel like um, one of your SEO tactics is in the gray area, just be upfront and let Google know what's going on. How to find Web 2.0 backlinks that matter in your niche by Chris Palmer. Let's check this out. Keywords, any keyword that is most important to your brand, business, or service, you're going to put it into Google. You're going to search it. You're going to go through the results. And if a web 2.0 shows up, let's see if there's one on this current page. We'll go Wix. Okay. Wix isn't there. How about WordPress? And I would just work down the list. Which web 2.0s for the keywords that matter to you are, sh is Google showcasing a web 2.0 property? If you're seeing a web 2.0 property show up in any of the search results for the keywords that matter to you, not just one, not two, not three, you probably want to target hundreds if not thousands of keywords. You're looking for the web 2.0 properties that are being rewarded by Google. It's as simple as that. Those are the best web 2.0 properties for you, for your campaign. My name is Chris Palmer. If you have any further questions related to web 2.0, web 2.0 backlinks, backlink building, link building, SEO, digital marketing, anything. This brings me to my favorite part of the show. Please ask questions and I will address them in the order that they receive. Before we get started, here is a word from our sponsor. Ever wondered how to get your brand noticed? I found the answer with Magic PR. Thanks to Magic PR, my brand now reaches over 300 plus premium news and media outlets. I've seen my news on AP, Bloomberg, Yahoo News, and many more. And it's not just about visibility. With Magic PR's unique SEO process, I've noticed incredible boosts in traffic to my site and improved local and organic rankings. From crafting the perfect press release to building a powerful SEO campaign, Magic PR is always there for me. Want to experience the magic of PR? Try Magic PR just like I did. Did. Watch your business reach new heights. Nice. Chris Palmer is a brilliant SEO consultant with no filter. He is the owner of Chris Palmer Marketing and SEO Mastermind Out Award. He has courses on backlink indexing, CDR manipulation, GSA, and more. He posts almost daily on his YouTube channel with over 25,000 subscribers. He is a speaker and is hosting the Digital Unfiltered Conference in Las Vegas in August. Please welcome the return of Chris Palmer. Oh man, welcome <laughs> back you, to man? the show. Welcome, welcome. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. Oh yeah, everyone let's give a round of applause. <laughs> I'm gonna go get right into it. This is the first question I ask all my SU professionals to come on, on here in one minute or less. How does Chris get ranking on page one of Google? Uh, traffic and links and on page. <laughs> Boom! That's the fastest one page answer, I, one minute answer I got. All right, guys, let's rewind this. Let's rewind this real quick. 
Chris, take us way back, way back into time. It was maybe over a decade ago. When did you first get into SEO? When I first got into SEO, I think seriously, when I was taking dollars, um, it was within the travel club and timeshare industry. That's when mm -hmm. I really actually figured it out. Um, uh, that That's when I really started to take off. I was being shown because we were doing, um, it was primarily travel clubs. Other mm -hmm. than my dad, like showed me, planted the seed, but mm -hmm. uh, doing the travel clubs, timeshares, they were showing me ads. And that's when mm -hmm. I noticed that, hey, there, there's money and opportunity here. But working working for the timeshare, working for the travel club industry, I mm -hmm. should say, that's mm -hmm. when I started really taking off. Love that, love it. So were you actually making websites for them or you mentioned your dad, so like was your dad into digital marketing at the time as well? well? My, my, well, my dad, well, this was a very long time ago. He owned a, a, a gym called Private Muscle Studio okay. and he was he, like, he had a website and he was like buying like, um, you know, like benches, like for the bus stops and stuff. But he put me on to the, like, hey, here's the web. Hey, you could stuff your title. You could do your header. I didn't know it at the time, but that's what he was doing. Mm -hmm. So he like really planted the seed. But as far as like learning it about ads and web pages and producing actual like rankings in order to make mm -hmm. money, it was through the travel club and the timeshare industry for sure. <laughs> I love sure. that. Love that. So, I mean, what part of SEO actually made you so interested in it? I mean, cause, um, over two years ago, two years ago we met and I mean, you've come, you've got launched so much more projects and stuff like that. I would love to hear about them more, but let's, let's take us to like, what made you, um, love SEO? Uh, well that's changed over time. Um, I think in the last e even five years, okay. you know, I think the ability to be able to go into a business and literally, because you can see everything that they can't within the business, the business mm -hmm. owners. Like I can see their competition. I can see the traffic. I can see the opportunities that they can't. Um, and, and to be able to go in there and just like turn a knob for them, it's a very rewarding procedure, in my opinion. Um, so as far as, that's like the biggest I think right there. Yeah, love it, love it. All right, so uh, let's let's say, let's kind of like take it back and like kind of work our way up here. So like, what, how'd you actually learn it then? Like, what, what would you? What were your sources? Anyone that you followed? I mean, like, what were you, what was your learning? Um, um, what was your way of learning SEO? Uh, I mean, <laughs> so it's been trial and error primarily. Okay, but of course I've gone through trainings too. Like mm -hmm. I've watched other people's stuff, Kyle's stuff. I've seen mm -hmm. Ted's stuff. I've been in, I, I'm in all the groups on mm -hmm. all the forums and I'm consistently learning all the time. But I think the most of the learning, not 80%, 90% of it is from error. Mm -hmm. Like banging my head on the wall is what I call it. Like, just like, oh, I did this, I got a result. I did this, I got a result. I, you know, mm -hmm. taking in orders on Fiverr, <laughs> you know, stuff like that. Like learning with, uh, you know, learning with the client stuff, mm -hmm. definitely uh, early on. I think everyone does that. You learn as you go, make mm -hmm. mistakes, lose clients, gain clients. But yeah, that's the big part. Of Excellent. <laughs> love it, love it. All right, all right, all right. So I wanted to get um, right. Let's take us into your your current like your current project that you got going on right now. Before we get into the, today's topic, which uh, everyone's probably most likely waiting for here, but everyone wants to know more about Chris, and uh, not because I do. I want to know, um, you know, the, the certain projects that you have going on. Uh, I think like over two years ago, you didn't have um, SEO Mastermind when we first talked. You know, SEO Mastermind .org. Tell us more about that. Uh well, I was super inspired by what Kyle and what Kyle was doing with the testing group. Okay. Cause I was running little tests for myself. That's what really sparked it to be mm, honest. Got it. Was Kyle was doing the test and I was like, I'm doing tests. Like, oh, people want to see this stuff? Like, <laughs> okay. So that's what really did it right there was, hey, I can actually share the stuff that I'm doing for myself with others. Mm -hmm. And there's monetary opportunity there, right? That's, yep, yep. I get to do what I love and make money. Oh. Yeah, it's a win-win. <laughs> so yeah. that was the real answer right there. And then the trainings, at first I was selling the trainings and doing the trainings, but I push and info products. I, I've been more leaning against that, trying to mm -hmm. do more service and service-based stuff and mm -hmm. like actually helping. I like the info, but it's not for me that much mm -hmm. anymore. Uh, but I like the testing group and I love meeting with the mastermind, meeting with the guys, meeting with new people and ladies too, uh, <laughs> new business owners, new problems, new issues, fixing them, figuring out what's wrong. Like that's, 
I enjoy that immensely. Plus the amount of people that I have contact with, like, oh, okay, yeah. this guy's got links. Hey, this guy can do this for me. This lady can do this for me. Like, yeah. I like yep. that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Make that money there, Chris. All right, all right, all right. So uh, let's get into um, um, today's topic. Today's topic is about Web 2.0. Um, sometimes some mm -hmm. people will call it like Parasite SEO or maybe even use it for buffer size. Or maybe it's like something that's like, there could be other things about it, but but not everyone knows about it. So I want you to kind of really, really briefly explain what is a Web 2.0 site and, you know, like uh, how, like for those that don't know about this term or strategy. Uh, Web 2.0 to me is just another asset that's on an authoritative website that I mm -hmm. can have control of or at least a piece of. Mm -hmm. um, that's how I look at them. You know, it's just an authoritative website that I have control and that's easy to use. Mm -hmm. And there's tons of them. So that means there's tons of opportunity, but what I've learned definitely over time is Google only, if you look at your hundred slots for a SERP, mm -hmm. Google only rewards so many slots for web 2.0s. Oh. So you have to be selective per SERP on which ones you choose. And every keyword is a new SERP. So oh. being very selective and utilizing those properties is best. Most people are lazy. I'm even <laughs> me too, where you'll just build a bunch of them, use whatever yeah. sticks. Mm -hmm. But I found it's better to just take your time and figure out, well, which one is Google rewarding? Okay. Mm -hmm. Which titles are they rewarding? Okay. You know, how much content do I need? All right. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's this, that's what I found to be the best for sure. Love that. Love that. Okay. Let's, let's even take it back a little bit because um, you mentioned like there's a bunch of um, like these properties. And so yes. what, what, what's so, what's so unique about them or what, what's the opportunity for those that don't know what they can do with all these um, web 2.0 properties that they find? Uh, well, the primary function there, and, and a Web 2.0 could also be, I know it's an authority site, but I look at it as another asset. We can even say Wikipedia, right? No, okay. uh, any asset that I could put content and links on mm -hmm. could be utilized for two things or in conjunction with two things. Mm -hmm. One of them is, of course, uh, yeah, I have another asset with my name, my name, address, my phone number, my content. That's one piece. Mm -hmm. But the other two that are really important is one, I can now build safely build backlinks through an asset without any risk, mm -hmm. right? There's really no risk. Um, and if there is any risk, I could always remove it. And the second thing, it's another asset that I can push traffic through, especially a site like Wikipedia. If mm -hmm. I can get a reference link and start driving traffic through there, mm -hmm. now I'm getting referral traffic from an asset that's authoritative. Yeah, that that's the benefit. It's if I put up a page and I know that Google's rewarding a specific web 2.0, mm -hmm. right? for a specific SERP, for a specific keyword, and it's already shown me the title it likes. It's mm -hmm. already showing me the page that it likes. Mm -hmm. Duplicate the page, Google rewards freshness. If I take what's already winning on the web 2.0 they're already rewarding, mm -hmm. probability of me re-ranking that is very high. Very, very high. Love that, love that. And for those that don't know about like web 2.0s again, like can you like, um Share some of like the main ones you possibly use that you always see. Because you said there can be different ones for different SERPs, but there's probably some that are like you'll see repeatedly, right? So like I'm curious, like what would you, um, uh, what do you usually see? Like where are some sites for those that you can get a better idea of like some of these Web 2.0 uh, properties? Zoho, uh, mm -hmm. it's very very consistent. Google, mm -hmm. uh, Google websites are pretty consistent. Mm -hmm. um, those those two I see very very consistently. But I mean, <laughs> Weebly's, you don't see that often. It depends on the SERP. Mm -hmm. Any type of WordPress, you see a lot of those. Mm -hmm. Angel Fire, I mean, there's there's a slew. But it really, to be quite frank though, like if, if you have a list of 500 mm -hmm. that are probably high authoritative, like if mm -hmm. we're looking at metrics, mm -hmm. you will see a variety of them depending on which SERP you're in. I mean, it mm -hmm. really, really varies. Because we're looking for quick wins. Like yeah. it, it has to get indexed not get indexed, it has to stay indexed. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like that's where the issue is. That's why I'm being very selective on which ones I go for. But it could be anything. It could, you know, it could be Weebly, it could be Zoho, it could be Goodreads, it could be a wiki page, it could be anything. Anything, if I could get a link on it and get mm -hmm. my content on it, it's that's the winner. <laughs> <laughs> love that, love that. Let's let's take Zoho for example. So, like, let's yep. say I, I like um, I go to Zoho, and isn't Zoho like some type of like productivity like thing? Kind of. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah so like, so, so what would you? So so what? Um, so uh, tell us, like, how would you develop that Zoho property? Like, what would you do on there if like if it's like a um, CRM? Uh, well, or you can create your. You can not only create your own profile, but you can create your own like free little website. 
oh, over there. Okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> they have a huge, I, I mean, that's only one. Yeah. But they have a huge variety of different tools and assets that they have. Mm-hmm. One of them is they do have a Web 2.0 property that's mm-hmm. Zoho. Yeah. That's just love, that. love that, yeah. love that, love <laughs> that. Zoho, no, we never thought, right? Because you would think that's like some type of, like a CRM type of software and like how can like we get a big backlink from that? And that's that's it's what about, I love about you, Chris, because like you always find all these, these um, interesting places that no one ever looks. And you find these backlink opportunities. I remember, like, even when I first started the SEO video show, I was sharing like some of your your clips on like some some crazy places where you can get backlinks, and, and it was just so easy. All you do is sign up for an account, and you get a backlink. <laughs> so right. that's some awesome stuff. Off. So we're getting some a bunch of questions already on here um, in the live chat. And if you guys, if you guys have questions, go ahead and send them in here because I'm gonna go blend them blend them in. As, make sure they're on topic on the web 2.0. We have one here from Emily, taking talking about buffer pages. If I do tiered link building to a three-year-old article that links to my money page, will that work to pass more power? Uh, well, it's three years old. Uh, if the page is still within the SERP, mm-hmm. uh, then yes. However, there there is like link decay, I guess is a good word. I get that from mm-hmm. Ted. I, I took that terminology. But mm-hmm. I, I think they're devalued over time. Mm-hmm. Um so I don't know if I'd use something that's three-year-old. However, as long as it's still showing up and it's showing up for relevant keywords, mm-hmm. then yeah, you can still build through it. Use it as a buffer for sure. Absolutely. Definitely. Love that. Love that. So, okay, I wanted to go into um, more of like that. The, you mentioned like you know, we kind of talked about Zoho and just kind of creating a property on there, you said. But so like I'm curious and for, I'm sure the audience is too. Like what type of content are you putting on this web 2.0? Well, that's generally pretty easy. Uh, again, everything is based on what Google's already showing, right? Mm-hmm. So it re- type in your keyword or a long tail keyword. It might not be your primary, mm-hmm. but any keyword that you're trying to win or something you maybe have a blog article for or anything, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, the content that's already being rewarded on the platform that's already being rewarded, that's the content that I'm going to utilize. Now, I might put a spin on it. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of times you'll see top 10 lists. I'll put yeah. myself at the top and then leave all the rest. Oh, uh, okay. okay. Yeah. So primarily I'm utilizing the content that's already being rewarded, the same link, everything. Literally, I'll change mm-hmm. out the photos, but I'm keeping the same titles, same headers. I'm just changing out minor details. And of course, the links that are inside the piece of content. Of course. Love that. Love that. And just go back, going back to our previous question with Emily. And for those that don't understand, um, can you explain a little bit about what tier, tiered link building is? Tiered link building. Yeah. Um, so you're, you have your website, right? Mm-hmm. The first set of links that you're going to build to your website, that's your tier one. These are generally your most valuable assets. Mm-hmm. Um, then the next set of links that you're going to build are going to point to the ones that were tier one, mm-hmm. right? So I'm building links to my links mm-hmm. and that would be my tier two. All right. So that's, that's link, that's link building in a nutshell right there, building links to your links. Love that. Love that. Okay. So I want to take, uh, take this question a little bit even further because link building can be, get pretty expensive, right? So it's like, when, why would someone do a tiered link building when they could just build all the links to their, their money page? Like, like why, wouldn't it get really expensive if you're building links to your links? Uh, well, and that's the reason, <laughs> that's the reason why we want to <laughs> uh, use tiers, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, because I can use lower quality uh, cheaper, mm. like niche edits. Okay. I can use other web 2.0 properties. Mm-hmm. Um, usually it's going to be edits or lower cost guest posts like PBM links mm-hmm. in order to power up my tier one assets. Okay. Uh, I can acquire these links anywhere between 20 cents up to five bucks, usually mm-hmm. pretty easily, like at scale, tons and tons and tons at this price point. So you're, you're doing cheaper link building in order to power up what you already have. That's so, um, so someone would be like, I would want to ask like, okay, um, where can we get these cheap links? Like for that cheap, like that's, that's pretty like, that's pretty good. Like from $5, like just 20 cents, like what would be like some of your sources? What are some of your tactics of getting these, these cheaper links? <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know so what I'm getting here. <laughs> if you're looking for niche edits for a dollar to $5, you can go to services.chrispalmermarketing.com. There you go. Oh yeah. Um, doing niche edits. You want cheap PBM links? Again, the same place. I mean, mm-hmm. all that stuff has taken time in order to either build or make those relationships. Mm-hmm. So, um, so what was the okay, what was the website again? For everyone, uh, just go to Chris Palmer Marketing. Chris Palmer Marketing dot com for those cheaper yeah. links to add to your web two All right, guys, we have a question here from Stefan. Hi, Chris. 
Do you use any tools to automate the publishing process? Yes and no. It depends on the project, right? Mm -hmm. So if, I, if let's say primarily it's like real estate and law is what I focus my attention on lately. Mm -hmm. uh, it depends on the project and if on the client. All right. But if I am going to automate it, uh, like Ranker X mm -hmm. is our go to because we can launch on multiple VPSs. It runs very, very fast. Mm -hmm. um, plus, I can add custom uh, okay. to build out. Also, we'll utilize a GSA website submitter, which again, we can program and set up mm -hmm. in order to, once we set it up, we can then launch on other pages. So those are the two primaries that we'll utilize if we don't care, you know? Yeah, yeah, if we yeah. have to take our time though, we're gonna, we're gonna go out and figure out, okay, these are the assets that are being rewarded. Mm -hmm. And we're usually gonna do that manually. Or I'll, or I'll have a VA do it really, Andrea. Love that. Love that. So when you talk about like even some using software like that and you say you don't care. So you, you this that's a perfect example to use for your tiered links, right? You'd probably say not oh, necessarily yeah. use that for your uh, your web 2.0s for you know, anything, but those are a perfect example when you would probably use a tiered link. Yes. God, there you go, yeah. you guys go. Yeah. There you guys. We're trying to break this down for you guys and hopefully you guys understand the strategy and why it works. Let's go. Um, you know, our, our buddy here, Hobby, sends us jokes uh, through email every once in a while. I see you copied on there. <laughs> so let's, let's see what Hobby has to say here. Hobby. Hobby has a true and false question. Hobby asks, publishing 200 articles a day is less productive than publishing 60 well-optimized articles a week. True or false? False. Ooh, false. Why? Uh, publishing 200 articles a day is less productive than mm -hmm. 60 well-optimized articles. So you're doing 200 a day versus 60 a week. Mm -hmm. I guarantee we could probably get them to hit Ooh. at a much higher rate doing 200 a day. Volume is key because you never know what Google's going to reward. How many times have you put up a page and this page will go and this one doesn't? And you're like, what the yep. heck? Why did Google reward this? Yep, Same yep. concept. So. Love that, love that. You know, you know that actually kind of brings me to a point where um, uh, on, on a strategy that you actually do as well is like getting things indexed, right? So I mean, like this kind of fits into that question of like, you know, because you might as well like if you can get all if sixty well optimized articles, maybe half of them get indexed, and you get like you know half of the two hundred articles. That's actually more indexation for you to um, go on, you know more articles that got got, got going. So that's an interesting answer there. But I'm curious, like, so what are some like quick strategies for those on getting your site's indexed we we use the api um okay. you know I, we use the google indexing api for our own properties mm -hmm. uh for our website even to help index backlinks but that's a whole nother story for another day <laughs> <laughs> but for your own pages for your own assets yeah. um the api and the okay. big bomb would be you know you you might need more than one api key oh Knowledge bomb there, guys. More than one API key. I, I, I see that. I see that. Love that. Love that. Okay, we have a question here from Rogue Drone. Rogue Drone goes, hey, guys, can you talk about the do's and don'ts when linking from Web 2.0s to your money or services pages? Is it safe to use exact match hyperlinks? Should you limit the number of links, etc.? Well, you know, this, this is debatable amongst a lot of people. Okay. However, uh, for us... Uh, we really like to s stick with naked. Um, mm -hmm. We found if we do naked, which naked. is the link, if you take oh, away yeah. the HTTP like, and naked. the slashes, <laughs> okay. yeah, naked naked anchor text, so no, no anchor, right? Just okay. the URL. Then I'm getting credit for brand plus the keyword because Google's mm -hmm. giving me credit for everything. That's now your anchor text. Got it. So I get credit for brand plus keyword. However, uh, if we're spending good money on links, not the cheaper stuff, mm -hmm. like we're actually buying guest posts, mm -hmm. we're going to primarily focus on uh, longer form anchor text. We want to get primary and multiple, not just like a phrase, mm -hmm. almost like a sentence worth of keywords in there. Cause I want to get maximum value out of these. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then brand branded and then primaries. As far as ratios are concerned, don't, don't drive yourself completely insane. Mm -hmm. If I'm buying a high quality link, I want to make sure I'm using a keyword. Mm -hmm. If it's anything lower, it needs to be naked or branded. Easy as that. Got it. Got it. Great tip right there. Raphael asks, question for Chris. What breakthrough moments have you had working with real estate websites or what's working right now in real estate websites? I know you mentioned that you're doing some real estate stuff. So what I'm curious myself, because I'm about to get into real estate. I'm actually taking my real estate test uh, as an agent um, next week. So <laughs> let's get some tips going. Uh, yeah. And that's a 
uh, being an agent and doing those types of markets, I have a couple of clients like one in Philly and, and like, uh, but doing that and where we're primarily driving leads is for like, we buy houses, sell your house fast, these mm -hmm. types of campaigns. Mm -hmm. um, so we're, we're selling leads, oh, right? So okay. we're motivated sellers. Um, so with that being said, what's being, what's working, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, consistently keeping the site fresh uh, with new content, because when you have 38,000 cities, okay. <laughs> uh, it's very hard to keep stuff indexed. Um, so keeping okay. the stuff fresh, keeping okay. steady traffic coming to the site. I mean, mm -hmm. all the basics. Mm -hmm. There's nothing. <laughs> there's no secret. There's no secret. <laughs> Love that. Uh, well, let's let's kind of like uh, drill down a little bit further because I'm curious myself. Once sure. I get into real estate, uh, I want to create. So, what kind of websites are you sending out? Because you mentioned thirty eight thousand pages. Like, what are you creating? What, what what's your asset or what's the website about that you're creating here? Um, well, what the asset is about is let's say that you have a homepage and the uh -huh. homepage is all about the brand. Generally, mm -hmm. it's going to be an exact match or a variation of an exact match, like mm -hmm. sell my house fast or we buy houses, something along oh, these lines. Okay, okay, okay. Um, and then we're just creating our top level state pages and then we're creating our cities off of that. Um, and then at each level, we'll build three to 10 pieces of supporting mm -hmm. um, in order to just build depth. Really, we're building internal links to the top level pages, the mm -hmm. state and the city, mm -hmm. so we can start building in cheap links. Uh, mm -hmm. That's why we're, you know, so now we can scale out the depth mm -hmm. um, and build in those links because you need a lot of links rapidly. The breakthrough was that too. Um, when you're building something that large, mm -hmm. you know, people are scared to build one or two links. You know, you would probably say I'm crazy, but we, we build 500, 600 at a time. Oh, man. Foreign domains. Yeah. So, Ooh. and, I'm seeing <laughs> uh, drastic improvements um, mm. for a national campaign. Got it. So, got it. Very interesting. Love that. Okay, <laughs> so there's one thing that I do want to touch on upon that because you said like 38,000 pages, like you know, thousands of pages. How, how, how do you manage that? Like, how are you managing those? That pages? How are you are you creating each one of those pages one by one? Is there software that's helping you um, for those that you know want to kind of like follow this this process? <laughs> well, luckily, um, no, uh, there is so. We do have a, a dev on the team. Um, oh, okay. But okay. he is basically, essentially, if you have to think about it, I don't, I don't know the coding lingo. Yeah, yeah. But essentially, he's made a, a form where you can just put. It'll switch out like the state. It'll switch out the city. It'll switch oh. out certain pieces within the template, mm -hmm. and it'll crank out the pages. Got it. That it's as easy as that. That's the best way to explain it. So you got a, you got so a custom tough. coder on like I'm generating like mass pages like just or just basically just switching out or kind of like something more programmatic like something like a really it, programmatic. A yeah. thousand. That's exactly correct. That's right. Yeah, he's not. Um, he that was one project that he set up. Like, okay, hey, we'll make the template. Mm -hmm. What we did is we figured out. Well, we went to one of the hardest areas, which is California, and mm -hmm. we figured out. Well, what's some winning content here, right? Mm -hmm. What is working here in California? Like, what's actually going to work? Like, how many words? What's the header count? What's what's optimizing? Which what is going? Mm -hmm. We utilized that template to launch in all thirty-eight thousand locations. Mm -hmm. We launched all the pages and saw, okay, which one is Google rewarding and which ones aren't they? Mm -hmm. After that, it took about two months to figure that out. Okay, which ones are they indexing? Which ones are they starting to, you know, mm -hmm. show up higher? Then mm -hmm. we went back to the drawing board on each of the ones that didn't, and then we started mm -hmm. our re-optimization process. Got it. Got it. That's yes. Yeah. Clinton says, yes, programmatic SEO. That's what it is, guys. All right. All right. So I want to um, kind of go back into like our conversation about Web 2.0s, right? So you sure. have now we are um, uh, you, you, you're, you found, you know, you have the, the properties, you're creating content. Now, like what type of content like are you targeting? Are you targeting the keywords that your main keyword is? Or are you targeting like keywords other than your money site? Like, you know, what is the strategy on your, your keyword research for these Web 2.0s? Uh, well, for the Web 2.0 specifically for that strategy, mm -hmm. it's we're looking at any of the primary service keywords. Mm -hmm. And then we're any any blog article that we're creating, any piece of content that's on your site, mm -hmm. we're going to do a search for that primary keyword. Anything that's in those top 100 results, if it's a Web 2.0 asset, again, like if you're looking at the SERP, there's 100 slots. Mm -hmm. Google is only going to get two or three slots to a Web 2 because mm -hmm. there's so many of them. Mm -hmm. So once we identify, okay, this is the Web 2.0 for this SERP that's being rewarded, then, okay, well, what's the piece of content that's there? Like what kind of content is it? Is it a top 10? Is it a list? Oh, okay. Is it like... Is it info? Like what, what mm -hmm. is it? Mm -hmm. And then usually to be honest with you, we'll just take exactly what it is. Usually <laughs> nine times out of 10, it's going to be a list. I'm just going to take exactly what's there. Slap our logo on it. Slap our <laughs> uh, 
content on it. Yeah, rip off the links, point them to our asset, and then move on to the next. To be honest with you, yeah. So, uh, so you don't even like. There's no like. You're not worried about duplicate content or anything like that. You just put it like in there. Absolutely not. Not not at all. Google's already rewarding that asset and that content. Uh huh. Why change the flow? But Google also rewards freshness. Got it. Got to speak. Of the time yeah. It's gonna shoot right in there. All right, all right. So that you actually brings me to my next question. Um, you said freshness. So how are you managing? Like, how are you going? Are you going back to these these pages, these Web 2.0 pages, and keeping them fresh? Like, are you updating these pages like it was your own website? Uh, for those particular assets, um, mm -hmm. we'll generally we're once we establish that piece of content. Mm -hmm. Depending on the platform, we might build out four or five more pieces of content on that site mm -hmm. and point them to that page that we want to win. Mm -hmm. uh, but in order to keep them indexed and keep them managed, we're going to point links at them, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but most of the time, that's it. We'll, we'll set it up, get it up. Usually getting the links in there consistently, mm -hmm. uh, we'll keep that page inside the serve. Got it. So you don't you don't really go back and keep the content fresh. Uh, since, since it's duplicate content, you're like, eh, whatever. <laughs> Just put it in the content. You don't really well, keep... I, maybe I should. <laughs> it's not 100%. It's probably somewhere around the 60% duplicate mm. range. Got it, got probably it. Probably somewhere. I mean, there's been enough changed. It's not duplicate. Oh, okay, okay. So you, you spin but it. You spin it. For, <laughs> for those, for everyone who's watching, uh, uh, there, there's a little spinning there. When we say just copy and paste, there's a little spinning. There's a, there's some yeah. spinning. And for those that don't know what spinning is, is basically rewriting, and which is what's, uh, I mean, there's a ton of, uh, these, these tools were like, um, like a few of them at first, but now like with AI, you can find so many spin writers out there uh, and, and you can pick your choice. I'm, cu I'm curious, like what, what do you use to spin content? Well, and, and that's the thing too. We don't necessarily want to spin too hard though, because okay. we don't know the LSIs. We don't know what entities are in there. Like there's mm -hmm. the variations, like it's there for a reason, mm -hmm. you know? So we don't want to change too much, but enough to where it's not the same. Mm -hmm. um, as far as that type of stuff, usually, uh, usually this SEO content machine, uh, mm -hmm. or we'll use phrase for that, mm -hmm. for that kind of stuff. Like that simple, easy, fast stuff. Yep. Got stuff it. Like Got it. All right. Those are the two tools he recommends. If you want to get into kind of like spinning a little bit of, on, on your content for your web 2.0 is here. So I want to, um, kind of talk about like, um, we were talking about like how to create these, you know, and you create, you teach this, but what are some mistakes you think people are doing on creating these wrong? Like how can, can, some, can this, can creating web 2.0s, um, can there be like a, a wrong way to do it? Is, can it, can there's a way where it can actually hurt your, your, your money pages by, by using these web 2.0s? Uh, well, I think if you're doing too many of them okay, and like, look at them as just buffers or, okay. or add-ons, it's okay. a place to either at, as a buffer or as a tier one, mm -hmm. or it's going to be something that I can run traffic through. Okay. Right. So we don't need a lot of these. We, we mm -hmm. really, really don't need a lot of them. You know, five or ten, you know, is probably more than enough, mm. depending on the keywords that you're focused on. Got it. Again, we're really just trying to get an asset that we can control and we mm. can run traffic through and run mm. a lot of links through. That's pretty much that's the strategy. Love that, love that. Okay, so let's let's take let's take it let's let's take it um, further down now. Now we got a strategy. Sure. We built this one out. I'm curious, like, uh, can you give us a case study or example where where you've seen like some significant impact by use just you know, maybe maybe you tested just using Web 2.0s only or something like that, or like kind of like, you know, kind of like uh, give us an example of some when, when you saw some success using some Web 2.0 strategies. Uh, using them only never, never, oh, okay. ever, never. Ever. Oh, I, okay, I, okay. I, you can't just rank only with the Web 2.0s. Okay. And two, on top of uh, utilizing the Web 2.0s, it's always part of like we're building guest posts, we're building mm -hmm. EDUs, we're building other links very, very rapidly. Mm -hmm. um this is just another tool it's just another asset in place mm -hmm. you know like that's <laughs> i i could never just show hey we just won off of web twos no way mm -hmm. i i just couldn't show that honestly no way okay uh but as far as getting success mm -hmm. it's part of ranking nationally for very hard keywords it's a mm -hmm. part of the process Got it. it's a part of it just like cranking out all the youtube videos mm -hmm. like spinning out the videos that's part of the process yep. creating the uh, podcast creating the books that's part of the process mm -hmm. establishing the entity is part of the process got it got yep. it love that guys if you have any questions coming down to my last few questions here and we're, we're coming close to time so be sure to go ahead and uh, insert your question into the live chats um i wanted to ask um so 
So now that we've, uh, you, you kind of mentioned like, so that's not all you use on, on the backlinks. Uh, I'm curious, so like what, what, what would you say is your uh, Chris, the Chris Palmer link uh, mix of backlinks? Like what are you looking for? What are you getting? And like, you know, kind of just give an idea. So what else is that you're using you know, on top of these um, to help these? Yeah, the prime uh, guest posts, okay. niche edits. Um, I mean, those are the two that really move the needle. Mm -hmm. um, like that's what we're really looking at. And then the PR links. Mm -hmm. You know, like I like PR to keep just that steady flow coming in of, mm -hmm. you know, cleaner links. They look really pretty on a report too, mm -hmm. uh, for the client. But what's driving is, is the guest posts, um, the niche edits. We'll do the web 2.0s, but really that assets there in order to beef up something that's already existing mm -hmm. and to run traffic through, mm -hmm. um, EDUs, depending on the project, like for law, EDU is great. Where do you get EDUs? Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> I interrupt you. Like, how, do you get to find, how do you find EDUs? <laughs> Uh, I have a great guy. Like you get okay. your Berkeley's, your Harvard's, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so we've been, just over the course of time, we've been able to successfully build okay. a very nice list. Okay. Nothing you'll find in like SEO Autopilot or these tools. Like oh, okay. it's, you'd have to create profiles. It's, <laughs> it's a, quite a pain in the behind, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. It's worth it. <laughs> love it love it love it thank you for sharing that okay so i want to again guys if you have any more questions go ahead and submit it uh so with with where do you see um like the web 2.0 do you think this is gonna be around it'll still be working and for those like uh, um that would say like like is this like black hat or is this gray hat or like you know like is it for those that would scare to try the strategy what would you say to them and like you know what do you think the future is with these web 2.0s it's definitely not black hat oh. that's that's not illegal in any way um so no, it's not black hat, grayer, mm -hmm. grayer, I might mm -hmm. say, definitely gray. As mm -hmm. far as the strategy sticking around, you know, over the course of time, I mean, Google, we used to always see those web twos in the top yeah. two pages. Mm -hmm. Now you're finding them on page five, page six, they're, they're in the index, they're there, but the slots are getting less and less effective. Mm -hmm. I look at it as slots, like mm -hmm. spots, because they're always there no matter what, yep, you know? Yep. Um, so I think over the course of time, they're going to start getting pushed out, but I, I'm sure new ones will come in where mm -hmm. Google reward them. Maybe not new ones will come in, then they won't reward them over time. I'm mm -hmm. sure the strategy won't go away. Mm -hmm. I, I don't see. <laughs> all right. All right. So guys, be sure to get and set up, um, take a look at, you know, if you're thinking about getting a little aggressive or even, you know, kind of just testing some waters. I mean, you don't have to do it to your own client sites. Just, you know, just test it. Test these things out if you, if you really are scared to kind of, um, you know, do a strategy, especially like something like Web 2.0. Web 2.0 have been out for quite some time. It's just like, you know, some people are just scared to do it and some people don't, don't even know what they are. So thank you, Chris, for sharing that and sharing this. With I want to go in. I didn't see any other questions come here, so I'm going to ask my couple questions I have left here. So sure. you are actually, you know, what I mentioned the last time I talked to you was over two years ago and you have a bunch of projects going on and one of the projects they have going on is a conference, right? There's a conference yes. that you guys yes. you're putting out i mean can, can you tell us more i mean i i know i know uh, clint's in here he said i, I know he's he's going to be out there at the conference as well right so i mean yes. uh, i'm curious Blessing. like for those that don't know about this conference i mean this is the very first one you're putting together tell us more about it within you know the next in a couple minutes like how about the conference what they, can they learn what can they expect and you know where to sign up and all uh, that good stuff sure so digitalunfiltered.com will mm -hmm. be in caesar's mm -hmm. palace august 22nd through the 24th uh, myself, my partner, and Craig Campbell were, were hosting the event. Uh, as far as what you can learn, we don't want to record it. Um, we have, in my opinion, for SEO, we have some of the top top guys, top, top ladies too as well. Mm -hmm. So we're looking to have unfiltered SEO information. Like myself, I want to bring a lot of the tests that we've been doing over the last year, year and a half, whether it's on CTR, traffic, mm -hmm. these big campaigns that we're running. We want to showcase some of those details and like the results we're getting. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what I, I'm going to bring. Um, and then we have Clint, we have Ted, we have Craig. Mm -hmm. Everyone has their own lane that they're in, whether mm -hmm. it's schema, whether it's affiliate. Mm -hmm. So we want to bring unfiltered information that's not recorded uh, for a very low cost. A lot of value, low cost. That's the That's the goal. No. Love that, love that. Okay, so I didn't see any other questions come in. This is the last question I ask all my SEO professionals that come on here. For those that um, I want to get into the industry, become an SEO professional, what would your advice be to them? My best advice, just go out there and make mistakes. Um, get an asset and start practicing. Read mm -hmm. and implement. A lot of people are gonna, like just do it. Just, just go, it, it's, 
yes, there's a lot of intricacies and there's a lot of things that you're going to learn. I'm still learning. I've been doing this. I feels like forever, mm -hmm. but just, just start implementing and doing, and you'll learn as you go and you'll get a lot better. I assure you. So just go out and start doing and it'll, it'll work out for sure. Love that. Love that. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Um, uh, everyone, let's give a round of applause for Chris. Thank you. Yes, mom, man. Thank you again so much for coming in last minute. I mean, I, 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 for, like, I just reached out and uh, well, I, it was less than 24 hours ago, right? It was, it was probably like more like maybe 18, 16 hours where I reached out. So thank you again so much for coming by. And I mean, it's glad to see you here. It's been two years. A lot has happened. Your, your, your YouTube channel has more than doubled to up to 25,000. I believe when we first talked, it was like 10,000. So congratulations there. Um, and for, uh, for those um, don't, don't know, again, it's digitalunfiltered.com. And if your services is chrispalmermarketing.com. Uh, and, yeah. the, and is there any social network that you're kind yeah. of like on the most? Uh, well, and then not, besides chrispalmermarketing.com, then there's Digital Unfiltered for the conference, mm -hmm. SEO Mastermind for mm -hmm. training, and the uh, we have courses and, of course, the tests. Mm -hmm. And then we have, I have a proxy service as well for private proxies, proxypixie.com. Mm -hmm. Love so that, Proxy Pixie. And socials, I love YouTube. Yeah. There we go. YouTube, if you want to get a hold of um, Chris, he watches videos. He posts like almost every day. I don't know how he does it. I mean, I, I mean, it's hard for me to producing one, one video uh, a week, but I mean, you go hard, man. You go hard. All right. It. All right, brother. Can you hold on for one quick second while I sign off here? Just hold on for one quick second. All right, guys, that concludes another episode of the SEO Video Show. Please support the channel by liking, subscribing, and hitting that notification bell. And I will see you next week. Peace out. Thank you for watching. Hope you come back next week. Make sure to subscribe. You don't want to miss a thing. Hope you learn something new because the vibe is incredible. From the special SEO professionals, SEO video show. Let's work. Want to see you be an SEO expert. Paul Andre DeVera helping you step it up. No delay right now. Time to level up. Hey, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe. Woo!